So when we deal with apostasy, we're not dealing with something where suddenly the lights went out, all spiritual light and life went out of the, uh, out of the human family in about 100 AD and didn't show back up until somewhere around 1820. And as we deal with this issue of what is the apostasy, we're also going to be dealing with the relationship of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to all other religious traditions in the world because um, I find and believe, and I'll show you how this fits in later, I believe that God doesn't let any of his kids alone without spiritual guidance. And that guidance may come through Buddhism, it may come through Hinduism, it may come through uh, Taoism, any other number of major religious traditions, Islam, what have you. Um, two weeks ago I was in Barcelona, Spain for the World Parliament of Religions. I was surrounded by persons from all over the face of the earth with profound spiritual traditions and a profound love for their neighbor. Nobody was there to change anybody else. I love those kinds of conferences. I don't like to be in situations where I can't be me in interaction with persons of other faiths. And um, so as I interacted with these people, I could feel the spirit. And the spirit was most strong when I heard some of the very faithful Muslim people speak about the essence of their faith and how that could interface with persons of other faiths. And the spirit was profoundly present as I sat eating langar in the Sikh center where they provided lunch for all participants of the conference who wanted to come. Um, Sikhs from literally all over Europe many of them from England came simply for the soul's purpose of serving other human beings no matter what their faith tradition. And so I come at this issue of apostasy knowing that my God, the one whom I worship through Jesus Christ, is also the God of all of my brothers and sisters and draws them all to him, not just through our tradition. Now, having said that, I want you to, um, I guess one of these days I'm going to have to actually get into the 21st century and learn to use PowerPoint for something other than just showing slides of world religion. Um, so I could, you know, have nice little diagrams up here and all that. But given my uh, technical, or technical ignorance, you're just going to have to do a little visualization here. And that's not a bad religious technique actually anyway, so. Um, I want you to hold two time periods um, in mind. The first one is the time that Latter-day Saints call the meridian of time or the time of Jesus Christ, his historical life. And then I want you to keep in mind the time of the restoration. And part of what we're going to talk about is this period in between the two, but those are the poles that I want to work with. Why did Jesus come? Hmm? Don't mumble. Okay, to work the atonement. And did he come for any other reason? Okay, that's part of the atonement. The resurrection is part of the atonement. Bring a higher law. Gain a body. That's also part of the atonement. Pardon? Okay. Did he establish anything? How did he, yeah, but, okay, organize the church. Took a while, but yeah. He came to work the atonement, 
but at the same time he came to organize the church. Now, did he know it was going to go down the drain? Sure, if Paul knew it in 2 Thessalonians, the Savior knew it. Why did he do it? Because he wanted to give us a template that would show us what the church was to look like when it was time for it to be on the earth as the Lord intended it to be present. Now, what is that template? Structurally, what is that template? Apostles, Quorum of Twelve, and the Seventy. Do you have to have a first presidency to have authority present on the earth? No. No, you do not. You do not. Otherwise, there would have been no authority from 1844 to 1847. The, the authority of the church lodges in the Quorum of Twelve. And so he calls twelve disciples, and he also calls and sends out seventy. And we as Latter-day Saints hold that lodged within that Quorum of Twelve is the authority to administer the saving ordinances of the Gospel. When that group vanishes, what vanishes with them? Authority. Authority. But does all knowledge vanish? No, no. no, not by a long shot. So when we talk about apostasy as Latter-day Saints, what we should be focusing on first and foremost is this issue of authority. Because that's what vanished in a hundred A.D. or C.E. It was the authority to administer the saving ordinances of the gospel. And yes, with that, some knowledge vanishes also. But the lights didn't go out. Any competent historian is not going to use the term Dark Ages anymore because they know that while the Germanic invasions of Europe and so on were taking place, the light of Christ, the light of the Gospel, was being preserved in the context of the monastic orders there, and the lights never went out in Eastern in the eastern portion of the empire, the Orthodox Church was growing and healthy and, and vital and was sending missionaries out into Russia and, and other points. So when we look at the apostasy, we are not saying to our brothers and sisters of other Christian traditions that they don't know anything. I have to say to you that I am assured today that 30 to 35 years ago, God called me to be a Presbyterian minister. I know that today just as surely as I did back then. And he gave me the authority to do what he called me to do. Because God does not call people to do things if he doesn't give them the authority to do what he calls them to do. So, what authority did I have? Did it ever occur to you that I had any? What authority did I have? Preach, preach what? Preach what I knew. What did I know? I knew Christ. I knew Christ my Savior and God gave me the authority to bring people to Him both through the preached and sacramental word. And I did that. 